بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أيها المسلمون عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بالتقوى الله فإن خير الزاد التقوى الحمد لله through the blessings and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have finished the fast of the month of Ramadan and this blessed month is something that the Muslims are proud of because it was something that was just given to this ummah only. All the nations were ordered to fast. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامِ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ O you who believe, fasting has been prescribed for you as it was fasted for those who were before, as it was prescribed for those who were before you. But the difference is, they didn't have Ramadan, and we had Ramadan. Allah blessed this ummah with the month of Ramadan and in the night of Laylatul Qadr. And He blessed us with the opportunity to have all our sins forgiven for those who fast and pray during this blessed month. Also, one of the great things about Ramadan that a lot of us tend not to pay attention to is that Ramadan is a madrasa. It's a school which teaches us how to be proper Muslims and how we should be all year round. So it's a renewal, a revival for us in our Iman. And this is a call and a reminder for all the Muslims to continue after the month of Ramadan. And one of the greatest things that Ramadan focuses on teaching the Muslims is the issue of taqwa, to have taqwa. And that's why I said in the verse that I mentioned before, a minute ago, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that fasting was prescribed for us and those who were before us, at the end of the verse, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Perhaps that you will obtain the taqwa, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the taqwa, as Talqi ibn Habib, rahimahullah, as he described it, he said, أَن تَعْمَلْ بِطَاعَةِ اللَّهِ عَلَى نُومِنَ اللَّهِ تَرْجُوا الثَّوَابَ اللَّهِ That the taqwa is to work with the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On light from Allah, meaning the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, being in the kitab and the sunnah. On نُومِنَ اللَّهِ Tell you thawab Allah that you want the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through your actions. And then he said in the second part, وَأَن تَتْرُكْ مَعْصِيَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَى نُورْ مِنَ اللَّهِ تَخَافْ عِقَابَ اللَّهِ That you leave the, that which is displeasing, the bad deeds and the sins which is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on life from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you fear the punishment of Allah. And in a small definition, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he said, that a taqwa is to do that which you have been ordered and to stay away from that which you have been forbidden. And you look all through the Qur'an, you find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He focuses on the issue of a taqwa. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اِتَّقُوا اللَّهِ وَالْتَنْظُوا نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ The issue of a taqwa here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He calls us in the name of Iman, and He tells us to fear Allah, and to have every soul look for that which He puts forth for tomorrow. The most important thing in this dunya is that we put forth, is what we put forth for tomorrow. So before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to focus on this, He says, Ittaqallah. And then after He says, Wattaqallah again. He mentions it again, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one example. All through the Quran, you'll find the issue of taqwa. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all through the sunnah, you'll find that he mentions a taqwa. In the famous hadith, Ittaqillah haythu ma kut. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you may be. So the taqwa becomes part of your life. Not just in the masjid, not just in Ramadan, but when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he says, Ittaqillah haythu ma kunt, that you fear Allah at all times, in all places, in all aspects of your life. So we need to focus, ayyuhal ikhwah, 
on benefiting from the taqwa that we have gained in Ramadan and building on it and continuing inshallah throughout the year. And what also we need to focus on is the issue of the Qur'an. Alhamdulillah, during this blessed month, we have renewed our relationship with the Qur'an. Unfortunately, so many of us, we tend to become busy with the affairs of the dunya and we forget reading the Qur'an. But when Ramadan comes, alhamdulillah, we renew our relationship with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need it in our lives. It's hudan, as, a, as, the, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described it in the Qur'an. It's guidance to mankind. It's shifa lima fi sudur. It is a cure for what is in our hearts and we need this. Subhanallah, even now, in some researches, they found that the non-Muslims, when they hear the Qur'an, they're affected by it. Because of the beauty of the recitation, the beauty of the ayat. And they're not Arabs, they don't understand it. So how about the Muslim who is the Qur'an? And, and so we must focus inshallah on benefiting and having our relationship with the Qur'an continue. And as the scholars of Islam mentioned, that a Muslim should read at least every day one juzu. So he can finish every, every month, have one khatma. And if he can't do that, at least a half a juzu, he finishes every two months, inshallah tabarak wa ta'ala. Also, this blessed month, it reminded us to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. And to focus on purifying our souls. And alhamdulillah, we can say as Muslims, now the non-Muslims, they focus on chasing the things of this dunya, thinking that they will find happiness. But we know as Muslims that the true happiness is in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Allah made it very clear in the Qur'an, أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَتْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ That verily through the remembrance of Allah, the hearts are assured. And he mentioned in the other verse, the people who turn away from him, his remembrance subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَنَّهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ That whoever turns away from my remembrance, that he will live a miserable or a difficult life. So we need the, 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 remember, the remembrance of Allah, the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives at all times. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when one of the sahaba came to him and he said, give me advice. And he said to him, لا يزال لسانك وقبا بذكر الله That your tongue should always stay moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that you're constantly remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. And this month for us, the month of Ramadan, it is a month of izzah, of honor for the Muslim ummah. Because it is the month where the Muslim ummah was made victorious in several uh, battles throughout the history of Islam. Some of the most famous ones obviously was the Ghazwa, was the battle of Badr. The first uh, battle between the Muslims and the non-Muslims with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yawm al-Furqan, when he showed the truth between the Haqq and the Batil during this great battle. Also, the conquering of Mecca, Fath Mecca was during this month. Also, the conquering of Indulus, which is now known as Spain today, it was during the month of Ramadan in the year 92 of Hijrah. Also the famous war of Ain Jalut also was during this and many others was during this. So it's a month of Izzah and honor for the Muslims. And this reminds us that Alhamdulillah, even though the Muslims now are at a time of weakness, then inshallah ta'ala, the truth will come back and it will start. Through truth is Alhamdulillah, it's here, but it will continue, it will go strong again. And the Izzah, the honor will be for the Muslims at the end, inshallah ta'ala. And this also reminds us when we see how the Muslims battled during Ramadan, the importance of benefiting from our time. Because unfortunately in Muslim nations, time has no qima. It means nothing to the people. But when you see that the Muslims, that some of the greatest battles of the Islamic history were during Ramadan, it shows you that it was a time for the Muslims, how they used to strive, even when they were fasting during Ramadan. And if you look at the ayat, and you make ta'amul, you focus and reflect on the ayat of Siyam, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ He said, أَيَّامًا مَعْدُودَاتِ It's a specific amount of days. Also to focus on teaching the Muslim during this month on benefiting and focus from benefiting from his time. Also we learned during this month in the school of Ramadan the importance of istiqama, of being steadfast on the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing that which is pleasing to Allah and staying away from that which is displeasing to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we learned during this blessed month the tamassuk bi sunnah the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Holding firm to the sunnah of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You find the Muslims during this month, whatever, wherever, whatever school of thought they're from, wherever they're from, if they're a weak Muslim, a strong Muslim, all the Muslims want to know, how did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to fast? Why do we break our fast with dates? 
A lot of people maybe in their customs, they don't eat dates when they break their fast. But it was from the Sunnah of our beloved Prophet ﷺ, so everybody focused on breaking their fast with the dates. Just this is one example. If you look how the Taraweeh coming together, focus on reading the Quran more, all of this is from the Sunnah. So the people hold fast to the Sunnah, and this is what we need to do if we want to be successful as an Ummah. We need to hold firm to the Sunnah of our Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, he told us, Abdu alayha bin nawajid. You need to hold on to it tight with your teeth. And he said in another hadith, تَرَقْتُ فِيكُمْ مَا أَنْ تَمَسَّكْتُ بِهِمَا لَنْ تَضِلُّ بَعْدِي كِتَابِ, كتاب الله وَالسُنَّةِ I have left with you that which if you hold firm to it, you will never go astray. The Book of Allah and my Sunnah. And Imam Malik, rahimahullah, he described the Sunnah as like Safinat Nuh, the Ark of Noah, alayhi salam. Safinat Najah, that we will not be successful as only the people who are successful who got in the Ark with Noah, alayhi salam, also, the only people who will be successful in this dunya and the only way that the Muslim will be successful is if they hold tight to the sunnah of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described the fast, he said, As-siyamu jinnah, that the fasting is a shield. A shield just like you have a shield when you're in battle and you put it up so you won't get hit by the swords and the spears and what have you. Also, the fasting is a shield for you from all the evil from a shaytan. So it took us some examples of how the fasting was a jinnah, was a shield for us during this blessed month. You'll see that we learned during this month to control and lower our gaze, غض البصر, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do. ظل المونين يغض من أبصارهم All the Muslims know that they must lower their gaze when they see a beautiful woman or something that is fitna. And also the Prophet sallallahu he prescribed for us the same thing. The Muslims know this, but they become weak. And the fitna and the time we live in there's so much. But alhamdulillah, during Ramadan, a Muslim reminds himself when he's fasting, he says, Astaghfirullah, I can't look at that when I'm fasting. So this alhamdulillah is how we should be at all times. So this is a training session for us to continue on this after Ramadan. Also, being truthful, and stop lying, and stop cursing, and saying everything that's just pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered to us to do in the famous hadith, when we are fasting. We have trained ourselves to do this during Ramadan, and we must continue inshallah after Ramadan as well. Also leaving al ghiba backbiting in the Mima. Alhamdulillah, we were successful in doing this more so in Ramadan. So it is important also that we finish, or we continue inshallah to do this after Ramadan. Especially for our sisters, because our sisters in their sittings, they continue to, they, they, they talk more than the men. So they fall into the backbiting more than the men. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Surah Al-Hujarat, when he said, لا يسخر قوم من قوم that another uh, people should not make fun of other people. And this means, if, you, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have just said this, it would have meant the male and female, as it is in all the verses. But then he said after this, وَلَا نِسَا مِنْ نِسَا And not women from women. They're showing the importance because the women, they're famous in their sittings for talking about other people. So now, alhamdulillah, during Ramadan, our sisters and also our brothers have focused on leaving this backbiting and talking about others. And we must continue on it, inshallah, after Ramadan. Also, we have learned during Ramadan and trained ourselves to control our anger. And some of the biggest problems that we face in society come from people not being able to control their anger. If we were to go to the jails now, and see somebody who was, uh, who was convicted of murder, the law probably take us all from that. But if somebody was convicted of murder, why did you murder so-and-so? What's he going to say? I was angry. The divorce is now. The person divorced his wife the first time, the second time, the third time, now she's not halal for him. He's looking for a way out. Why did you divorce your wife? I was angry. SubhanAllah. Why weren't you patient? I was angry. Alhamdulillah, so now, you'll see now that um, the relations between people, the room between the anger, so alhamdulillah, through the fasting, we teach ourselves to control our anger during the month of Ramadan, and we must continue after the month of Ramadan as well. Also, the, the fasting helps us when it comes to the brothers who are in business, and they have fallen into haram by cheating other Muslims, or even non-Muslims, cheating people who come to buy from them, who deal with them by cheating them. And subhanAllah, when you look at the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, when it comes to cheating, it's a very, very strong hadith. مَنْ غَشَّنَا فَلَيْسَ minna. SubhanAllah, it's a very strong hadith. The Prophet says, whoever cheats us, that he's not from us. So anybody who lies when they, when they sell stuff to people, when they deal with other people, the Prophet ﷺ described them as not being from us. So it's a major thing. But Alhamdulillah, a lot of the brothers who have fallen into this haram, they were able during Ramadan inshallah, to stop this, so it must continue as well after the month of Ramadan. Also, one of the greatest things that Ramadan has trained us to do is the issue of ikhlas, to have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why is fasting so great 
and making our ikhlas, our sincerity so strong, because fasting is from the acts that nobody sees and nobody knows about except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're fasting, nobody knows. Now you can go into your room, you can drink, you can eat, nobody knows except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you're training yourself to have ikhlas, and this trains you in the importance of tawheed that you only uh, offer your acts of worship only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you don't offer any acts of worship to other than Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a training session for you on this, that you continue after Ramadan as well. Also we have trained ourselves during this month to focus on the salah and jama'ah. To focus on our prayer in the congregation with the Muslims. And this is something that Muslim men must strive to do also after Ramadan. Also the qiyam of layl, that we continue to pray the qiyam during the night, and not just during Ramadan. As we mentioned in the Eid khutbah, the Prophet ﷺ used to pray all the time, all year round. It wasn't something he did just during Ramadan. He might increase in Ramadan, but he would always pray 11 rakats. And he would pray so long, even outside of Ramadan, until his feet would become sola alayhi salatu wasalam. And as he said to Aisha, when she asked him, you do this, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven your past and future sins. And he said, أَفَلَا أَكُنْ عَبْدًا شُكُورًا do I not be a servant who is thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And also the Prophet sallallahu he prescribed the night prayer to the Sahaba even during the Meccan stage in order to make their iman strong when he the da'wah of Tawheed, calling the Tawheed and this night prayer. And that's why they were so successful when they reached Medina radiallahu anhum. Also we have, re- we have trained ourselves during this blessed month with a great thing that all of us need which is a sabr, patience. Because it's not easy now to leave that which is halal for you. Pay attention to this. When you're fasting, you leave that which is halal for you. You leave food and drink, sexual intercourse. All of this you leave, which is halal for you with your, with your wife or when you're eating or drinking. And you leave this during also, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this blessed month. So this teaches you patience. Also we mentioned before, the training of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for us. If somebody were to curse you or say something bad to you, that you say, inni sa'im, inni sa'im, verily I am fasting, verily I am fasting, to teach yourself patience. And we will not be successful as individuals or as an ummah if we're not be able to pay, have patience and, and the problems we face in this dunya. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ And to seek assistance through the prayer and through the sabr. بَارَكَ اللَّهُ لِي وَلَكُمْ فِي الْقُرْآنِ وَالسُّنَّةِ وَنَفْعَنِي وَيَاكُمْ بِمَا فِيهَا مِنَ الْآيَةِ الْحِكْمِ أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ بسم الله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على نبي المصطفى وبعد The blessed month of Ramadan has trained us and taught us so we can continue after the month of Ramadan as well. And from the things that has taught us the importance of akhuwa, a brotherhood in Islam. We come together with our brothers during tarweeh. We come to our, our with, together with our brothers during iftar. The rich, the poor, the different nationalities, wherever they're from, they all come together as one and they'll have one hope which is for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also it has taught us to be generous during this month. And the Prophet as it came in the hadith, kana ajwa than nas. He was the most generous of people, and the more generous he would be was during Ramadan. But also the Muslim must be generous all of the time. And I want to point out, ayyuhal ikhwa, we we'll talk about these points, and they're points number 12 and 13, which is the importance of brotherhood and being generous. That what has happened to our brothers in Pakistan. I mentioned this morning, I'll mention it again now, that uh, how many million, 12 or more million who are homeless now, and don't have anything because of the floods. So we need to remember them. Alhamdulillah, we're a blessing here. We need to remember them. Everybody should take out part of his money and see how to send it. Obviously, you need to check out a good way. I'm sure, inshallah, you have the charity organizations here, the aid organization or whatever. Then, inshallah, they will send the money and make sure the money gets to the brothers. So everybody should take a part of his money during these next few months to send to the brothers and sisters there because they are in dire need of it. Also, this month has trained us to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The beauty of this month is that we come together and we make dua during the taraweeh. And the dua is so important. And unfortunately we tend to forget. During, we're so busy in the dunya, we forget about the importance of dua. If something bad happens to us, the first thing we do, we look for the wasta. Who can help us out? Who can help us out, get our paperwork through? We don't forget to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ramadan has reminded us now of the importance of dua and having our heart attached to dua. And as the Prophet said in the hadith, even if it's something, if your shoe were to be ripped and you make dua that you get to get it fixed, alhamdulillah. Even the smallest thing you should make dua for, as we were taught by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Also this month has trained us, it's the month of the raja and the khawf from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hope and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as it came in the hadith, that whoever fasts in Ramadan, whoever prays during Ramadan, whoever prays Laylatul Qadr, Iman wa Ihtisaban. Through Iman 
and through the hope that he will get the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that his, his sins will be forgiven. So this month teaches to reject, to have strong hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he will accept from us our deeds, and also to be fearful from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we train ourselves to stay away from all that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order to have our good deeds accepted. And we talk about the khawf and the raja, the fear and the hope and the worship. We see that the scholars of, of Islam, they describe the khawf and the raja, the fear and the hope, as the two wings of a bird. They said that it's so important in your act of worship that you have khawf, the same amount, and the raja, the same amount. You have hope and fear, 50%, 50%. You don't have a lot of hope. Now the Muslims say, Allah is afur rahim. He's the most generous. And they forget that he's shadid al-iqab. He's severe in punishment. So a Muslim must be 50-50 in this. Just like the two wings of the bird. And they said it, just if something happens to the one wing of the bird, what's going to happen? He's going to crash and fall down. He's not going to be able to fly. So also the Muslim, if he doesn't have this in his life, his ibadah will not be ex uh, accepted from him. It won't be correct. Uh, the next point is that Allah Ramadan has taught us about the muhasiba, Teaching us to hold ourselves to account. Just as every time we want to do something that's haram, we remember it's Ramadan. We say, astaghfirullah. Well, look at that which is haram, astaghfirullah. When I say that which is haram, astaghfirullah. Somebody curses at us, we say we're fasting. So we've been training ourselves... And this is called the muhasaba, you're holding yourself to account. And the importance of this muhasaba, some of the salaf, rahimahullah, they used to say that every night before you go to bed, you should hold yourself to account for everything you have done during the day. Every night. So you see that what you have done wrong, and make sure you don't do it the next day, and that what you have done good, and you increase inshallah the next day as well. And the last point we want to point out, ayyuhal ikhwa, wal akhawat, is that we need to be we taught ourselves on this month is to be thankful, the shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah said at the end of the verses uh, of the Siyam, that we will be thankful for this. And so to Baqarah, it's one of the reasons that the Siyam was prescribed for us is to be thankful. So we must be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has blessed us uh, with this blessed month. And we must continue to make dua that He will accept from us and make istighfar if there was any shortcomings from us. Inshallah, He will make, uh, he, will, he will look over it and He will accept from us our fasting and our qiyam and all of the good deeds that we have done during this blessed month. And we must remind ourselves, as I said in the beginning, that one of the main things that Ramadan is teaching us, one of the main goals of Ramadan, is not just to forgive us of our sins, it's to give us the taqwa we need, and to call us to continue throughout the year to do all the good deeds that we have been doing. ثُمَّ عَلَمُوا رَحِمُوا اللَّهُ وَيَّاكُمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَمَرَكُمْ بِأَمَرَ بَدَأَ بِهِ بِنَفْسِهِ ثُمَّ ثَنَّ بِمَلَائِكِهِ الْكِرَامِ فَقَالْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتُهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى عليه بواحدة صلى الله عليها بعشرة اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنم على نبينا محمد وعلى أهله والصحب أجمعين ورد اللهم من الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين وسائر الطغاة والمفسدين يا قوي يا متين اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم انصرهم في فلسطين وفي العراق وفي أفغانستان وفي شيشان وفي كل مكان يا رب العالمين اللهم عين إخواننا المتضررين في باكستان اللهم عين إخواننا في باكستان اللهم عين إخواننا في باكستان اللهم أتي نفوسنا تقواها وزكيها أنت خير من زكاها اللهم وفق ولاة الأمر المسلمين ولاة أمور المسلمين للعمل بكتابك وسنة نبيك وزوكم البطانة الصالحة الناصحة اللهم تقبل منا صيامنا اللهم تقبل منا صيامنا اللهم تقبل من صيامنا وتقبل من قيامنا وزكاتنا يا رب العالمين وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد